Hello and welcome to the episode 116 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Among other things, today we'll talk about some early gigs, the 1964 enemy Paul Winner's concert and three different recording sessions. 1961. On the 26th of April, the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, performed at a Top Ten club in Hamburg. It was part of their ongoing second German residency in that venue. Almost the same story one year later in 1962, with the lads, still featuring Pete Best, performing at the Star Club for their ongoing third Hamburg residency. Moving on to 1963, we find the Beatles on the stage of the Music Hall in Shrewsbury for the first of two consecutive nights booked by promoter Lewis Buckley. And finally, we get our first juicy bit of the day with the 1964 Enemy Paul Winner's All-Star Concert at the Empire Pool in London. It was the Beatles' first live appearance in UK after 15 weeks, and the Fabs topped the bill with a performance of She Loves You, You Can't Do That, Twist and Shout, Long Tall Sally, and Can't Buy Me Love. After the performance in front of some 10,000 people, the Beatles received their awards from the hands of actor Roger Moore. The ceremony was filmed by ABC Television and showed during the Big Beat 64 program, broadcast on the 10th of May between 4.05 and 5.35 pm. You can watch the concert following the link in the episode description, by the way. On the 26th of April 1966, the Beatles had two recording sessions booked for them at the Abbey Road CMI Studios, the first between 2.30 and 5.30 pm, and the second between 7 and 10 pm. In fact, the Fabs were so focused on completing a remake of John's And Your Bird Can Sing that ended up working non-stop between 2.30 pm and 2.45 am. The results were 11 takes of the rhythm track, plus of a Dobson take 10, considered to be the best. Another recording session in 1967, still at the EMI Studios, this time between 7 pm and 2 am. Having completed the backing track of Magical Mystery Tour the day before, the Beatles spent this session overdubbing bass, maracas, cobel, tambourines and backing vocals on the available tracks of the tape. The session was wrapped up with a reduction mix, creating take 9 and freeing more space for further overdubs. Finally, in 1969, between 2.30 and 4.30 pm, John Lennon was at the EMI Studios to mix in stereo the 22nd of April recording of John and Yoko for the wedding album. Then, between 4.30 pm and 4.15 am, he was joined by the other Beatles to assist an attempt by Paul McCartney to record the lead vocal on Oh Darling. It was the first of several attempts by Paul, leading to the inclusion of several harmony vocal lines and the erasure of the Hammond organ part played by Billy Preston. After that, the Beatles recorded 32 takes of the rhythm track of Octopus's Garden, with Paul on bass, Ringo on drums and vocals, and John and George on guitar. Despite the writing of the song had been completed during the Get Back sessions, as it could be seen in a sequence of the Let It Be film shot on the 26th of January, the piece had never been properly recorded by the band until today. And before we can close another episode of this podcast, it's mandatory for me to remind you to please visit www.simonmas.com support and show me how fab you are. Whether you're listening on the day of this episode's release or 50 years down the line, your help can make the difference, spurring me to create more music-related content. If you want to find out more about music history, theory and composition from yours truly, please wait your support in. I promise you passion, effort and as high a quality as I can afford. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.